Video calls from space. Get ready for cable to come back and you're not gonna believe it. We've got AI motherboards and more importantly, AI thermal paste. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about Starlink having its first successful video call test using its internet connectivity to a T-Mobile phone without using any extra hardware. In the past, this would have required you to slap a gigantic satellite receiver onto your phone, but Starlink and T-Mobile have teamed up to make it so that it can work on various devices. Currently, it is a test, but Starlink is saying that it could potentially go live to T-Mobile customers later this year with them having the video call. It's not perfect. It definitely got grainy, but they are not using local cellular towers. It is going to space, which is where all you want all of your data going out into the ether. And that's allegedly where Scarlett Johansson told OpenAI to go, not not to use her voice when it came to the chat GPT 4.0 voice assistant that became Sky. She alleges that she was reached out to by OpenAI asking, pretty please, can we use your little sultry voice that you did in her and we wanna make it our little AI chat assistant? To which she said, no, for personal reasons, I don't necessarily want to be associated with this after she was reached out to by Sam Altman, saying that he told me that he felt that by my voicing the system, I could bridge the gap between tech companies and creatives and help consumers to feel comfortable with the seismic shift concerning humans and AI. But once, of course, Scarlett Johansson saw that OpenAI decided to go ahead and use her voice without her permission, she decided to find out exactly what's going on after being shocked, angered, and disbelief that they would pursue it without everything that she agreed to. But of course, OpenAI saying that uh, the voice of Sky is not Scarlett Johansson's and it was never intended to resemble hers. We cast the voice actor behind Sky's voice before any outreach to Miss Johansson. Out of respect for her, we have paused using Sky's voice in our products. So essentially saying, nah, this was not ever our intent, despite the fact that the CEO of OpenAI tweeted out during the demo her hearkening back to the actual movie that Scarlett Johansson plays an AI assistant that Joaquin Phoenix falls in love with. And this is obviously what you're supposed to believe it, that this, this the reason he tweeted that was he, he's just in love with the Sky voice. It has nothing to do with the movie. Anyways, we'll see if this moves forward with a lawsuit. Scarlett Johansson has already won a successful lawsuit against Disney. And according to reports, she has not issued a cease and desist nor pursued legal action against OpenAI, but essentially had her lawyer send a letter that said, what the heck guys? So we'll see if this goes any further, which you'll be able to watch this entire proceeding on cable, get ready. It's back, Comcast announcing that they have a streaming bundle for you. For $15 a month, you can get Netflix, Peacock, and Apple TV+, Plus, which is $10 cheaper than they would be separately. However, you have to be a Comcast Xfinity cable or broadband subscriber, and then you can tack it on, which is exactly what it sounds like. This is cable just being reintroduced through streaming services over the internet. What if we take a bunch of disparate channels that people normally wouldn't have access to, and we put them together and we sell it for one price as a package. What a great idea. So they're gonna be releasing this towards the end of this month, but to note though that $15 plan is all of those services with ads being served in them besides Apple TV Plus, because they haven't rolled out their ad version of their product just yet. But many people predicted that this was going to be coming down the pike, that many more services were gonna get conglomerated together to become a bundle. And now of course, Comcast, the former cable company that, you know, mostly their job was to sell you cable is trying to return to that by selling you cable versions of streaming services. But you know what? I want Reese to try to sell you something too because that's what we do with UFD deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It is Wednesday, my dudes. And hey, would you look at that? We've got some deals over here. Starting off with the Innogear low profile mic boom arm for only $27.99 with the coupon applied, making it $18 off. And next, something I wish we still had here in South Africa is the anchor charging dock for Quest 2, going for only $39.99, making it $40 off. And then lastly is this gorgeous InnoCN 27 inch 4K 160 Hertz mini LED gaming monitor for only $519.99. 99 cents with the coupon applied, making it $280 off the total price. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like Noctua is dealing out its wares to your desk. They want to bring their beloved fans out to 
be accoutrement on your little table that you use all day long with them launching the $100 NV FS1 desk fan, which is essentially an NFA12 fan with a stand and a nice little spigot that goes on top to blow the air and circulate it in a way that Noctua deems is good for your face and your environment. They're calling this Noctua home and this was something that they've been discussing for quite some time that they were going to bring out. It was a little delayed after the pandemic, but now it is here with them showcasing the various ways that you can use the Noctua fan on your desk to promote airflow all around. When you buy it, it comes with a little power plug that you can attach multiple fans to in case you want to have those blowing on you. And initially when Noctua came out and said that they were going to be releasing this Noctua home setup, they announced that they would also present files for you to be able to 3D print your own stand at home. They have not yet provided those files, but they are expected to be forthcoming, which is what Intel wants to remind you of when it comes to their Lunar Lake laptops even though two days ago was the big event for Microsoft and Qualcomm with their Snapdragon chips to give you Copilot Plus PCs, Intel seemingly left out of that. They want to remind you that they will have perfectly capable Lunar Lake chips that will be able to qualify for Copilot Plus, and that's going to be coming out this fall. So get ready to enjoy Intel inside of your AI. That's where you want it. That's what the I stands for. Advanced Intel. Artificial ingredients. So in case you want to have Microsoft Recall running on your Intel laptop, just have to wait a little bit of time for that. And we're waiting for AMD to talk about their stuff that they're going to be bringing out, which they've announced that their Computex keynote is going to cover the fact that they're going to give you the envelope of next generation high performance PC data center and AI solutions, and then they're going to push it on you going to push that envelope. Desktop chips, hopefully, definitely the Strix Point APUs are supposed to be announced, which are supposed to have the AI 45 tops for the XDNA 2 chips. It's it's going to be AI everywhere. Just keep watching for it, which is what we're finding out from a leaker on what the next generation Intel desktop motherboards are going to have. They're going to have AI. Kyler, AI motherboards. Hi, Mumbo. <laughs> I Mambo Combo? Reports are that Gigabyte is gonna have various different Z890 motherboards coming out, but with several of them having an AI nomenclature attached to them, such as the Z890 Oris Extreme AI Top. And it's not quite clear by these product listings exactly what AI in the motherboard means. Intel has told us that they're gonna be bringing AI to their next-gen Aero Lake chips that launched probably sometime in Q4, so likely this could just be marketing that's tagged on to the end of the motherboard name so that you know it's AI or maybe what would be kind of neat but likely not going to happen they actually have the NPU the neural processing unit on the motherboard itself so that the motherboard actually does all the processing and your CPU is reserved for all of that regular gaming compute that would be neat likely not going to happen this is most likely just going to be a marketing exercise which let's talk about AI thermal paste because Cooler Master is bringing that out. They introduced, honestly, before I get into the details, this is some of the coolest thermal paste that I've seen on the market in quite some time. We've covered the apple scented and strawberry scented thermal paste that got released in Japan. Allegedly, they might be flavored that way, but while thermal paste is typically non-toxic, you're not supposed to eat it. But I will say this new Cryofuse 5 from Cooler Master makes me at least want to dabble a little bit. They look like they could be flavored get me some blue raspberry in there, I'd yum it down. But Cooler Master releasing this Cryofuse 5 AI thermal paste with them saying that it has incredible thermal conductivity, having 12.6 watts per meter Kelvin, which is all right, it's pretty decent. But in case you're wondering, how is this delicious looking thermal paste related to AI at all? Well, don't you worry when you go to the product page for it, they say, it's AI thermal paste. It's easy to apply and easy to clean. It looks new instantly with a light wipe. It is more electrically insulating and corrosion resistant, safer and more efficient. Moreover, it is a nano diamond molecular technology which can maintain stable performance and a certain temperature range, which in case you're wondering, the AI doesn't mean anything. They didn't say why it's AI thermal paste. Was it developed using the use of AI? Is it potentially for putting on the next-gen AI chips when you get your Aero Lake CPUs later this year? Or is it just marketing? Is the AI craze that everybody is trying to shove down our throats like the first gagger of the summer just purely to get us to spend money and not actually meaning anything at all? I don't know. 
you tell me, did all of that blockchain and NFT stuff that these companies bought into a couple years ago ever pan out? I sure think it did. There's absolutely no evidence of CoffeeZilla doing an expose on an AI product company that used to be an NFT situation that promised the world and never delivered on half of the promises that they could even dream up in the first place. This is not happening again. Nuh-uh, Cooler Master would never dare. That being said, it does look delicious. Kyler, which flavor do you want? What's the Gagger one? Which one's the, the yellow one that looks like mustard? Or the red one that looks like ketchup? Mix together. Mi mustard ketchup mixed thermal paste on the first Gagger of the summer. Yeah. You prefer Sheets or Wawa? Sheets. Sheets dogs versus the Wawa dogs? I don't think that was true. When we went on the Cannonball, you liked the Wawa dogs more. Wrong. Okay, well, let's see if I was wrong in yesterday's episode of Hot News by reading the comments. Over on Floatplay, we got Crypto Knight saying, does that mean that Microsoft is bringing us Total Recall? Ha! Ha! Like that movie from the 80s or the remake that was slightly worse. And we got Little Nicky Scarfo saying, I love how they say faster than MacBook. The issue with laptops hasn't been overall powered, has been performance to battery life, which is as of now, Microsoft has done horrible to implement with Intel and AMD, which is technically true, but also Microsoft did address that in their event where they talked about how the Snapdragon chip should get up to 22 hours of battery life, which is a known entity that ARM tends to be slightly more efficient getting extra battery life. But we'll have to see what the real performance performance numbers and the metrics hold up against each other in terms of like, okay, yes, it gets 22 hours of battery life, but is that while it's doing as much as a MacBook Air does, especially since like the minimum Copilot plus PC has to have 16 gigs of RAM. Well, now we kind of have an Apple's to uh, Apple's comparison where we can see when Apple says their eight gigabytes of RAM is like 16 gigs on Windows. Well, now that they both have ARM situations, is that actually true? I'm curious to see how that goes down. And then on YouTube, we got Keith saying, it's called co-pilot because the pilot saw the mountain coming and jumped with the last parachute. Like that YouTuber who uh, did that to get more views on his on his video. Are, are you saying that everybody's just seeking attention and wants to cash in the bag? That's impossible. I, how, how dare you <laughs> assert such a false accusation. Then we got the good doctor saying, you can search your history. It means that they can search your history. Just wait until the next user license agreement to pop on that next iteration of Windows. Be careful what you click on next. Yeah, that is uh, definitely a heavy concern when it comes to what Microsoft is doing with Recall. Obviously in everything that they promoted with it, one of the things that they mentioned with them storing the snapshots of what's happening on your computer Computer, is that it's all locked down to the local user, that it's all kind of mitigated where you are. It's processed locally on the NPU, which is why you have to have these Snapdragon chips that are certified for Copilot Plus. And it also appears to be opt-in, so not everybody's gonna have it, but it does, you know, have that curiosity aspect of, well, what if I have multiple Windows devices? I wanna sync my Copilot snapshot across my various Windows devices. Where are you storing that, Microsoft? Is that in the cloud or is that stored locally? How are you managing that? What is What are you doing to actually safeguard the data? They, they are saying right now that they are not selling to advertisers, but I, I do think the good doctor, you're, you're quite right. We have to make sure that we're paying attention to how Microsoft's gonna move forward with this. Cause right now it's just kind of in a testing phase where they're getting feedback. I'm really curious to see how this plays out in the future when they might find more advantages of how they can monetize it for themselves. And then we got a few more people just kind of being negative Nellies when it comes to recall. Goner me leggy is saying as someone that works in healthcare, Windows needs to have a pro license without the recall feature, you know, for HIPAA, which yes, they have various different versions of Windows that are just not even available to consumers that you can use in different industries. And it appears like recall is opt-in at this point. It's not something that's gonna be enabled by default. I do get the hesitation and the skepticism surrounding it, but it also so at this current moment, doesn't appear to be something that everybody needs to be afeard of. It just looks like something that we just kind of have to watch and see what happens. Then JDD ES saying, recall is exactly the kind of nonstop invasive telemetry I've feared. Looks like 10 really will be my last windows. And then Ram said, Copilot, more like keylogger recall. Ha <laughs> ha, 
that those are you that was a funny play on words good pun there and then jm saying i think the mpu requirements make the most sense on tablet handheld mini pcs etc that can't have a gpu added for ai especially legacy systems with gtx and eighth gen intel era parts which still meet the original windows 11 requirement but might not have been upgraded to rtx or intel 12th gen plus era parts yet i i can understand that argument from one side of it of like yes copilot plus requires 40 tops you just need to make sure that your new npu can can actually utilize it the problem is gpu has been able to use this for a while and the fact that they also don't get that designation is the problem right like my gaming laptop can handle this i don't need a 45 tops npu on my my 14900k because my 4090 can do 1300 tops I, i'm not i'm not bogged down by whatever this standard is i should be able to access this and technically I'm already certified for Copilot Plus because my GPU can do all of it anyways. And I, I mean, GTX 1080 Ti can do 40, I think it's 44 tops. So it also technically qualifies. Like you can, you, not every GPU is locked out of it, even if it's older. And then lastly, we got E. John saying, my favorite thing is when people throw out a bunch of acronyms in a row without taking the single second it would take to explain what they mean. I am not sure if you're talking about the Microsoft event or if that's a valid criticism you're trying to levy against the show but i absolutely understand that's one thing that i know that i fall prey to a lot is talking to the in crowd like the people who have already been here so when i say things like npu i kind of just presume a lot of people know what that means i try to explain that it's neural processing unit when i can and kind of try to make it more accessible but also in in a certain regard like something like a gpu like people just call it that. The acronym, yes, does mean graphical processing unit, but people don't really care what the acronym is. They just refer to the thing as the acronym, right? Like laser, that's an acronym. Scuba, that's an acronym. We use those words to mean the thing that the acronym represents, but we don't care what the acronym means, which happens a lot in tech. Like the AMD, that's an acronym, advanced micro devices. I don't care what the acronym stands for. So that, that ends up happening and it makes it very inaccessible to people looking in who aren't in the know. And that's um, something that I am going to try to be more cognizant of as I continue to uh, approach topics that uh, it might be uh, that that I want to reach a larger audience. So thank you for checking me on that. Appreciate it. And I appreciate you watching this episode of Hot News. We'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends. <laughs>